Help me find your true path. I'm lost, God, without your truth. Wow, well, you know, we're going to be talking about truth um, here for just a little bit, but that's, that's an amazing story. That oh, my goodness, shared, and I just love her heart. It's just so, so humble, so grateful. Um, it's just cool. I mean, to, to think that there are people that we are potentially running into mm-hmm. during the day in our, that would have that same question. Right. Like, Absolutely. I, I, and it might be framed this way, does God really love me? Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, it might be from another country, or mm-hmm. it might be because, you know, I've done this, or I've done this, or I've done this. Mm-hmm. Does God really love me? And then for God, we're going to be actually talking about this very thing. Um, one of the things that Abby was sharing backstage here was how they just depended upon the Spirit to just lead them and guide them into these conversations. Mm. And when you pray that, guess what happens? That happens, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But how, how, how many, uh, let me ask you a question. It's this, can we always trust what we hear? <laughs> You did see the last slide, right? Only available on April 1st, April 1st <laughs> right? So we have an April Fool's joke by this. First of all, I, I, I know some of you went from, okay, 90-year-old, lunatic, okay, 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 dry lunatic. First of all, no real Christian eats lunatic. <laughs> Let's just get that on the record. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay. I'm joking. You. Okay, lunatic eaters, raise your hand. Oh, now they're going to raise their okay, hand. Are you we, kidding okay. me? There's, there's two of you, yes, or three yeah. of you. You're a Christian, okay? I take, I take back what I said. In fact, you are a very, very brave Christian, okay? <laughs> but I'm one of the guys in my guys group. We were talking about lunatics this past week. Goes, no, I love it. Ugh. It's, like, it's like fish jello. Right, right. I, I'm telling you, that's, that's what Would you eat that up there? Yes. No, you would not. They okay. would eat it on a dare, unlike a, on a dare. Okay, on a so Wednesday you night. You just can't yes. always believe the things that you hear. It's not always truth, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I uh, picked up some other kind of April Fool's things. Number one, invisible earbuds. That'd be slick. <laughs> That'd be cool. I'm listening right now. Okay. <laughs> How about a 7-Eleven tiny gulp? A little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> A dot-sized PC, like some go like that's all it should be anyway, right? Okay, a dot-sized, or this one here, deodorant that offers 24-hour protection in three cents, <laughs> original beef, <laughs> lighter fluid, or what is it? Mes- mesquite. Mesquite. Yes. Mesquite. Mesquite. Oh, yeah. Because I, I pronounce it mesquite. Steak. Steak. Mesquite. <laughs> anyway. So uh, but it, uh, all this stuff's going on. So it, 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 does it kind of feel like that maybe we're living in like this April Fool's environment every day? <laughs> can feel like When, that. you know, you turn on the, the news, whatever you, wherever you go to for your news source, and you're just not sure, you know, what's true, mm-hmm. you know, or it, really? That? Mm-hmm. And we begin to question. So we're going to talk about that today. So the, the question to start off is this. Is there such a thing as relative truth? <laughs> is there such a thing as relative truth? Well, the answer is yes, no, and it just depends. <laughs> for clarity, let me clarify for you. Right? Yes, no, and it just, it just kind of depends. It really so. does depend. I mean, yeah. I mean, when we t- think about certain things, right. like, like take iPhones, for existence, okay. there's a certain truths. Like Tom's truth is that you have to order the iPhone before it's even announced that it's going to exist the newest and make one. sure you have the newest one before it even comes out. Somehow your truth is I've got to have that phone before it even comes out. My truth is that if the iPhone turns on, it's a good iPhone. That works for me. Yeah, so we, just right, have, yeah. we just have a little bit of a different oh, way of going on, about that. Come on, you get that. a hand clap there. Oh, of so he, yeah, yeah, he carries so, the oldest ones I do. <laughs> I do. So, so, I mean, some of us are in a spot where it's like, yeah, I, I need to be on the bleeding edge. People are like, bleeding edge, that's a term. You need to be on the bleeding edge of, of technology, and some are like, hey, as long as it works. Which one is true? Well, I yeah. guess they're sort of both true, right? right? Yeah. I mean, it depends on our personal experience or, or opinion in those moments. But does that mean that all truth is then relative? And does it mean that all truth is then just socially constructed? It's just something that's kind of put together and that there really is no truth? 
I mean, the question that we have to ask is, are we free as mankind to determine what truth is? And you have to wonder, is there even an absolute truth for us to hang our hats on? Yeah, and so someone goes like, there's no absolute truth. And so our question is, are you absolutely sure? Right. Kind of a circular question. <laughs> how can you say that and be absolutely sure that there's absolutely no, no truth? So this right. riddle has been around for a while, and actually some in one form, you know, attribute it clear back to Abraham Lincoln, right? Mm -hmm. But I'll just give it to you. So here it is right here. If a dog has four legs and you count the tail as a leg, how many legs does the dog have? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Who said weird? Did someone <laughs> say, yeah, weird. So think about it. If the dog has four legs and you count the tail as a, as a leg, how many legs does the dog have, and I see some guys in my small group, you know, showing me, because we talked about this, dog has four legs. Hmm. Just because you call the tail a leg doesn't make it a leg. How about that? Have you pretty, heard that before? Pretty straightforward. Well, yeah, I did yeah, today. Pretty, yeah, you did. Nine o'clock. <laughs> okay, so uh, is truth, let me just, is truth what we make it to be? Mm -hmm. Is that truth? N.T. Wright, Tom Wright, um, de <clears throat> defines a problem this way. All truth is somebody's truth. Everything depends on who's telling the story and from what angle. But does that mean there's no such thing as truth at all, after all? He goes, of course not. The Christian gospel, what's called the, the gospel story, however, offers a deeper approach to truth than the world is able to provide. In a world where it is suggested that truth itself is an illusion, where truth itself seems like a broken signpost leading us around in self-defeating circles, Followers of Jesus ought to respond that, to that and proclaim the absence of truth itself is a lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. And we're going to talk about that, about that, about that truth, because there is truth mm -hmm. that we can depend upon. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's the question that I think people are asking today. Well, it is a question. Yeah. It's a question that's been going on since the ages. I right. mean, it's just that question about this whole idea of truth. And we see this moment with Pontius Pilate where he's wrestling with this very concept. He's sitting there in front of Jesus, and there's this moment in which he is with Jesus. And in John chapter 18, this is what we read. The religious leaders have brought Jesus before Pontius Pilate. And this is what we read. It says, then Pilate said to him, so you are a king? And Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come to the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And then Pontius Pilate asks this question, what is truth? Truth, what is it? You see, that's a question that's been going on throughout the ages. And it's an interesting interchange exchange between the two for sure. I and mean, was Pilate just asking the question out of frustration? And was he irritated that Jesus had, had put him in the situation that Pilate found himself in? Was he truly asking a question from his own desire to know, like, what is this thing called truth? You know, it's significant that after Pilate asked Jesus that question, he turned and he left that spot. He went back outside walking away from Jesus, the walking away from truth himself. And as followers of Jesus, as we step into this conversation about truth, it's so important that we don't find ourselves in the same place that Pilate did, that as we encounter him who is truth, that we turn and walk away from the very thing that's being presented to us, the very person of truth. Yeah, it's kind of, a, it's, it's, it's an interesting piece of that story that is easy for us to probably overlook, to hear Pilate ask the question. He has truth, capital T, right, right in front of him, and he asks what's truth and then turns around and then, and yeah, then walks away. Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder how it would have went if he would have just probed and stopped. And wonder what Jesus would have said. Hmm. Yeah. But so here's what we're going to do. We're not going to walk away. Right? We're, we're going to lean into um, truth today because here's, here's the reality. What you lean into ultimately will lead you. Just mm -hmm. think about that for a moment. What you lean into will lead you. Um, what you read, what you focus on, what you meditate on, ultimately, that's what will lead you. So let's lean into what the Bible says uh, about, about truth. Mm -hmm. um, in John chapter 14, it's a long passage, verses 1 through 17, and I'm just going to share verse number, number 6. Um, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except 
except through me. So again, like Pilate, like yet truth standing right in front of you, here's Jesus going like I am the way and the truth and, and, the, and the life. Jesus is the truth, capital T. Now we're going to dive into three realities and three results in just, just a moment, but we're going to do so because truth is not a concept. Truth is not just someone's thinking out there. Truth is a person. Truth is a person. That's a pretty good place, even if you not an amen or in church, to say amen. amen. Truth is a person, and his name is Jesus. Jesus. So let's amen. talk about three realities and then three, three results. You can jot these down if, if you want to. We're going to lean into these. Number one, truth as a person. Truth can be known. Right. Each one of us, if you're a follower of Jesus, you have come to know the truth, capital T, the person of Jesus. You come to know him on a personal level. Jesus speaking truth declares that contrary to what people may think or, or contrary to what people de determine, there is only one way to the Father. So regardless of how you may think, right, of what you need to do, there's only one way to the Father, and that's through him. Access to the Father is a whosoever, right? Believe. Mm -hmm. So in John, John chapter 3, verse 16, who, right? Makes whosoever clear, right? believes in him. Mm -hmm. It's the whosoever. So that's the access to the Father. In the words of Jesus is this wonderful promise to know me, Jesus, is to know the Father. Truth can be known. It, maybe you're one of those who feel like, like, does God play hide and seek? You know, have you ever thought about that? Or like in the search for truth, mm -hmm. is, is it just like a hide and seek thing? Mm -hmm. So Jen and I, I took Jen on a date up to Home Depot, and um, <laughs> it's, it, it, that's a joke. It, we, it, we did go to Home Depot, <laughs> but it wasn't it was a an date. official date, yes. Well, an official date, right, right. I did ask her, do you want to go to Home Depot? Well, that so, counts for something. But here's what happened. So we were, we were up there, I was picking something up, and... Uh, and we were um, following a family, a young family. Um, and so they had a little baby in the cart. And then like from about here to you, mm -hmm. they had their little four-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. I think about four, something like that. Um, she wasn't like 16, like she was four, four or five. <laughs> younger, and, younger. And so a little young girl. And she was following behind. And then we were behind her. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're following. And pretty soon, this little four-year-old girl she steps into one of these kiosks, or like a kiosk or a thing, right? That, mm -hmm. So she's completely hidden. And her parents keep walking. Mm. They have no clue that this little girl decides she's going to play hide and seek at Home Depot. Takes off. <laughs> right. And so we finally said, you might want to turn around. And you know, your, your daughter, and they turn around, she's completely gone. <laughs> And she's a pro, because she does not come out. And so dad walks down the aisle and finally finds her. Then she comes. So anyway, it's kind of, kind of a funny little story. I thought about that, because sometimes we think God plays hide, hide and seek with us. Like, how do I know the truth? The reality is truth can be known. He lives is in us if we open up our hearts to him. Romans chapter 1, verse 19. Paul speaking about the, about the wrath of God being revealed. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it, shown it to him. God has revealed himself to us through his son, Jesus. Mm -hmm. truth, truth can be known. So that's reality number one mm -hmm. that kind of lean into. Right. Yeah. And the second reality to lean into is that truth can be depended upon. And that's important for us to recognize. And John is speaking to his disciples. He's given them the kind of the last, like, here's what I need you to know before I leave this earth. And he says to the disciples in John chapter 16, he says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, it continues to say, on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. You see, as Jesus is speaking to the disciples, he reminds them that through the spirit of truth, they would be led to truth because Jesus was in a spot where he was going to leave. But here's the thing. He wanted to make sure that they understood. He wanted to make sure that you and I understood as people who are disciples that we are not left alone. That God, 
gives us his spirit so intimately. It wasn't just like, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be with you. I'm going to place my spirit within you so that you always have access to truth where, uh, wherever you are. One commentator says it this way, that, that this promise to the apostles helped them to know that their partial understanding of Jesus would be completed as the spirit gave them insight into the meaning of the soon-to-come cross and resurrection, as well as the truth about Jesus' return. And so this is why if you happen to be reading in the book of John and you read through and they're in a spot where the disciples are like, they don't know what's going on. They don't understand what's happening. But at the point in which they see this resurrected Jesus, they see the tomb empty, John starts to go, ah, that makes sense. Ah, now I get what Jesus was yeah. doing. Oh, that's what he meant when, with, because the spirit was placed inside of him so he could start to understand. That's what Jesus was talking about the entire time. That's what it was always pointing to. And so the spirit, that same spirit that lived in John, that helped reveal to him, that lived in Peter, that propelled him in certain ways, is the same spirit that lives within inside of us, that lives within all of us. And it causes us to be able to have confidence that we have a truth that can be dependent on. It's something that we can lean into, a truth that we can lean into. You see, in a confusing world where truth is proclaimed on so many different levels and so many different ways, you and I, can depend upon the Spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth. Yeah, I, I love what you said, Mario, that um, it's the same Spirit that lived in them, lives in us right now. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you thought about that? You consider that? So some might remember um, this song. This is like a worship song. It's the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Anybody out there? Anybody? <laughs> Okay, do it was me a from favor. a different and era. Lie and tell me that you heard that oh, song. Yes, it was okay, great. there you go, Remember right there. That. So, okay, it was a great yeah. song. Yeah, Loved it. Remember so, it. Anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but the point of that <laughs> song was that it is the same spirit. Mm -hmm. So the first reality that we're leaning into is truth can be known. known. The second reality, is truth can be depended upon. Capital mm -hmm. T, because not what we think. Capital T is a, is a, is a person. The third reality is that truth lives in us and works through us. And that's what you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. Truth lives in us and works through us. I, I, I just love your story, Abby. Right? And there's more to her story than that. That was just one, one little part. Going and, and just knowing that the Spirit of God would lead them and guide them as he worked through them, the Spirit of God, right? Mm -hmm. um, the truth lives and works through us. Verse number 14 of John chapter 14, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Now, we can take that completely out of context, by the way. If I ask God for a new car, Come on. boom, right? Let's or a that. new job or a new... No, that, that's taking that out of context. That is not, not what that means. Um, this is a prayer or a promise not, not to satisfy like our whims, our natural, natural whims, but that his purposes would be carried out through us by his spirit. Mm -hmm. That was your prayer, Abby, as you know, God... Right. You carry out your purpose through us as we go, mm -hmm. right? Jesus came to seek and save who? The lost. Lost people. That's mm -hmm. why he, so we, he, we that's, that's our commission, right? Mm -hmm. To reach people and disciple them. In my name, it's not like some magical formal formula that we can, we can do, but it's a prayer of a believer, a follower of Jesus, who the truth lives in, that he will carry out his purposes through you and through me every day in whatever it is that you do. So you guys, you got heading out to school, right? Or wherever you go. So like, God will work his purposes through you, yes? Wherever you go, wherever you get to come, no matter where we are, because truth is a person. Right. And he lives in you. And sometimes, you know, we kind of, we, we kind of, um, we talk about um, the spirit of God. We, we kind of sometimes can go like, you'll just think of the Holy, the Holy Spirit as kind of like this ghost little, you know. <laughs> it's a person, right. right? It's a person that lives in you and lives in me and guides us each and every day. So those three realities lead to three results. So let's lean into the results now. Right. right. There's a sense that if that's true, then there's a result of that. Yeah, and if this, this, then that, right? If <laughs> this, then that. That's your jam. I, yeah. <laughs> if this, then that. So result one is this. We don't have to live in the fear of what's happening now. And that's an important thing to recognize because we've got all kinds of stuff going on. 
You see, there's a moment in which Jesus um, and the disciples are in a boat, and they're crossing over the sea, and as they are, um, well, Jesus is asleep, the disciples are awake, and there's a storm raging all around them. And the disciples are freaking out at what's going on, and they get to a point, they wake up Jesus saying, like, help us out here, buddy, I mean, this, we're going down. And Jesus wakes up, and he speaks to the wind, speaks to the, to the waves, and says, be still. And it's done. It's taken care of. You see, truth is in the boat of our lives with us, right here, right now. That regardless of what's going on, even when there's storms inside and outside of our lives, he is the one that speaks peace and speaks calm over the storm. Truth is with us. And we have to recognize that. We don't have to live in fear of now. And as we trust the spirit of truth, we don't have to live in fear of today and what it will bring. His promise is to never leave us. His promise is to never forsake us. And that leads in not just to now, but the, the, re, the result number two is that we don't have to live in fear of the future. And now I know that there's stuff, I mean, you don't have to go very far. You don't have to turn very far. You don't have to turn on too many apps to recognize that, that this world just seems like it's going crazy. It seems like all the time. And it's so easy to fall into a place of fear around those things. But the promise, there's a promise of the Spirit living within us that makes such a difference. Jesus is speaking again in John chapter 14. He says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you, not just now, but to be with you forever. He will be with you in every circumstance, in every situation. And that's not to deny that that stuff is going on around us. It's to say that we can live differently in the midst of the future that sits in front of us because he lives within us. If the future looks and feels uncertain, you get to know that you're not walking through it alone. Yeah, exactly. So um, reality is we don't, have to be, we don't have to fear now. Mm -hmm. We don't have to fear, fear the future. And it is true because what we're not talking about is like deny the future. Absolutely not. Right? There's stuff, there's stuff going on. We don't have to mm -hmm. deny the future. But, but listen, we don't have to be in fear of it because truth leads us and guides us and lives in each one of us. Each one of us. Well, result number three is this. We don't live in fear of the world. I don't know about you, but man, you, you turn on the news, you go like, this looks really, really bad and all this going on in the world today. Mm -hmm. And we can get anxious moments from that, can't we? Can you? Absolutely. Like I can. Um, talked a little bit about that last week, how you know, we need, some of us need to be delivered from worry and some of us need to be delivered from fear. And the way that we're delivered from fear and worry is to understand that capital T, truth, lives in us and leads us and guides us. We are never alone. First John chapter 4, verse 4, Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. And here it is, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. He who is in you, who is in you? Mm. Hey, don't leave me alone now. <laughs> so let's just say truth, capital T. Who is in you? Truth. Who leads you? Truth. Who guides you? Truth. We're not alone, right? We're not alone. He who is in you, truth, is greater than he is in the world. Uh, so we depend upon him to lead us into guys. There's a, lot, there's a lot going on, but he is present in your life. He's present in your life. Amen. He's present in our life if you know him. He will lead you. And he will guide you mm -hmm. into all truth. Absolutely. Right? There's a lot of things going on out there. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people saying this is this is true and this is true and this is true and we lean into the reality that truth is a person his name is jesus and he lives in you and he lives in me so two questions as we wrap up where do you need assurance that truth is present some of you are facing difficult situations and, and you're facing circumstances and you go like i just don't know what's true here mm -hmm. where do you need assurance that truth, capital T, is present with you right where you are right now. You're making a big decision. Truth is present. Mm -hmm. you're, you're having a tough conversation with maybe a family member or a workmate or whatever. Truth is present. And the second question is, where do you need truth to guide you? Circumstance or situation, conversation, decision, mm -hmm. wherever it is. We are not alone. God's not playing hide and seek like that little four-year-old girl. Right. He lives in you and he lives in me. Amen. We're going to pray. And so what we're going to ask you to do is just take a moment just to reflect on that and then offer up whatever it is to Jesus. And it just goes like this. It's just a prayer. Mario is going to lead us. God, um, 
I need you to lead me and guide me. I'm looking to you. I'm leaning into you. I'm not leaning into this idea or that idea, but I'm leaning into you and know that your spirit will lead me and guide me in this situation or this conversation or this decision, whatever it is. And he will. And he will because that's the promise that he has given to you and to me. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Lord, we do indeed come before you this morning, um, offering ourselves to you um, in so many different ways, um, even as we sit or we find ourselves standing or wherever we might find ourselves in this moment online, um, our heart posture is, is one of offering ourselves because we recognize that in and of ourselves, um, we can't make it through this world. And we don't have the tools, we don't have the resources in and of ourselves, but because of you, because of you coming, because of you dying, because of you sending your spirit, there is a way. You said that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And so, Lord, we cling to you this morning. And as we offer ourselves to you, um, we do have circumstances in our lives that we're trying to figure out. Um, we have circumstances that come to us, and they do bring fear. They do bring anxiousness. But this morning, Lord, we're coming before you saying, Lord, once again, that we trust you with the circumstances of life. We trust you with ourselves and the, the things that are going on in our lives. We trust you with the decisions that impact us now and in the future, Lord. We trust you with, with everything that comes into our life, the things we see on television, the things we see in our apps, wherever we find. Lord, we'd say today that we trust you and we declare that we need you. And we confess, Lord, that there are so many moments in which we find ourselves not living in light of your spirit living within us. And we ask for your forgiveness in that in these moments. And we say yes to you again. Lord, some of us are coming to you for the first time, recognizing that we do not have the spirit of you living within us. We've lived our lives trying to, trying to figure out our own truth, and it's led us down from, from dead end to dead end to dead end. And yet, um, this morning we're running into you. And our hearts are open to say, God, we want you. I want you. Would you come into my heart and my life? I need you, Spirit, to come and live within me. I'm done trying to make my own truth. This morning, I choose you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my God. Be my guide. I choose to live life with you, me and you, you and me. And I thank you, Lord, that your answer is yes, here and now. And so, Lord, as a faith community, whether we're praying that prayer for the first time, saying, Lord, we choose to have you lead our life, or we're saying once again, God, we're reorienting our life, we're rerouting this moment again to say we're choosing you to be Lord and Savior, to guide every circumstance. Our hands are, and our hearts are open to you to do what it is that you want to do. Here is our heart, O oh Lord. We pray that you would speak what is true. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's...